What's happening, Booth Junkies? Mike Delgadio here. Um, I had an audiobook that happened to get released today, and that had me thinking about my audiobook process. And I thought I would share with you part of um, how I create and manage my audiobook projects uh, and how I have Reaper do a lot of my work for me. The part that we're going to concentrate on today are the regions and markers aspect of Reaper, because that can really simplify any project that you have to create multiple parts or that you have a really big, long project that you need to manage. I know uh, in seeing what a lot of other audiobook narrators do, they tend to break up uh, these really long reads into separate projects for each chapter. And for me personally, that's never really worked because I find it difficult to make sure that my sound is exactly the same across all these chapters. I like to be able to, to jump through any point in the book and make sure that my sound is consistent across the entirety of the project. So let's take a look at the screen. Right here you have the entire project that, uh, of the audiobook that came out today. It's called Heart of a Lion. And if you look at the top of that screen, you'll see that there's all of these different color-coded sections that I have that indicate each individual chapter. You can see there's lots of edit points. There's lots of places where I did multiple takes in order to get it just right. Uh, but it's all one great big long file. So this file happens to be, what, seven and a half hours long. And as long as you have the disk space for it, Reaper doesn't care. It's totally fine with creating an eight-hour an eight project, and it's actually really quite easy to manage. But at the top, the, each one of these sections represents perhaps a file that needs to go to uh, a CD, or maybe it's a chapter that's going to get created into an MP3. Below that, you see each one of these red marks. These red marks are called markers, and they indicate just a specific point in time. So whereas a region indicates a time selection, a length of time, a marker is an instant in time. And I can use these to help manage my book. So I'm not going to mess around with this final book because this was the actual production book, but I've created a sample project of a really super tiny audiobook um, that we can uh, use as a way to demonstrate what I have going here. So I've got a little tiny test project here, and let's imagine that this is an eight-hour WAV file, but we're doing them really small so that we can get some, uh, some quick output to, so that you can see what, exactly what we're doing here. So let's imagine that these three segments each represented an entire chapter. It doesn't matter if they're 10 seconds or an hour long. The process is going to be exactly the same. But let's imagine that we needed to mark off each individual chapter. The way we do it is we highlight the chapter. So we'll just see if this is chapter one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. All right. So that's, that's the whole chapter. But let's imagine that we wanted to now mark that on screen that it's the whole chapter. We make the time selection and then we right click and we say create region from selection. You see that's also shift R. So we create the region from, from that selection and then up in the top, in this gray bar that gets created, we right-click that and choose Edit Region, and we can give that region a name, Chapter 1. And we can see that it also assigns uh, a numeric ID for it, and that's an ID that you can use just for your purposes. So you could call it 100, 200, 300, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 3. You could put them all in different orders. It doesn't really matter. That's just a number for you. It happens to put the number in the order that you added it. You can also set a color for that region. So I usually just pick a color at random and click OK. So that way each segment gets a different color. So once you've got that region selected, uh, color coded, and you've got the name, you click OK. And you can see up at the top that it creates a region, a named region for you. So let's just quickly do that for all three chapters here. So we'll just go to chapter two. Create region from selection, edit region, set color, and then click OK. And we'll do the same thing for chapter three. Edit region, chapter three, set color, 
and we click OK. So now we have all three chapter segments marked off. Now, let's imagine that we also have a note that we want to send to the engineer that says, I'm not quite sure how a particular word is pronounced. And we know that that uh, word, let's just say it's right here. So we've, we've found where that word is in our project. And we want to have a note that to ourselves or to the engineer or to whoever it is that we need to check on the particular pronunciation of a word. If you put a cursor at that particular section and then hit the M key, that puts a numbered marker separate from the region up there above the time ruler. You can also click Edit Marker and make a note to yourself. And then click OK. So now we actually have a fairly well-documented little audiobook here. I've got three different chapters and I've got a note to myself. So now if I want to put this out to disk, maybe I'm going to send these files to the engineer or to the client or to whoever it is. I can just go to File and then Render. Now here's where, here's where the regions and the markers really make themselves shine. So we get our rendering box and we can start to fill in how we want to have this project rendered. So the first thing that we do is we come up from the, up to the top here and the boundaries of our render, we don't want to necessarily render the whole project, all that blank space in between. We just want to render each individual region. And you can see that as soon as you check project regions, it comes down here and it says render three files. So we're going to put three files out to disk. That's really helpful. So now it's going to automatically create our chapters for us. Here's, um, then the next thing that we do is in the file name, we can actually have it do the file naming convention for us also. We can start by clicking this wildcards button and then let's put in the project name and then a dash and then the region name. So now the this name of the project is called Regions and Markers dash chapter one. And we should be able to see down here in this render to we can see exactly what that first file is going to be called. So it's actually going to create the naming convention for us. And so we'll go through and we'll make sure that we have our other settings correct. We have, we want to put it out to mono, we want to put it out to wave, we want to put out however it is that we want to put it out. And then we can click render three files. And it's going to quickly, one, two, three, create those three files for us. So let's now see how those look on disk. So we'll click show in finder. And we can see that it created a, uh, three different files named exactly how we want them. So it's got the name of the book and it's got the name of the chapter. That is really cool. So let's close that out. Another thing that we can do, let's say that we wanted to have uh, somebody else listen to that chapter to help us with that pronunciation. And we only wanted to render chapter two with thus just that pronunciation question that we have. If we click File, Render, now we'll tell it to include down here, instead of do not include markers and regions, we'll have it include markers and regions. So we'll have it include that in our final render. But we really only want to render chapter two, right? I don't need to render the other chapters. So in this case, we'll go to the Re, uh, the region matrix and that will bring us up a grid of all of the different chapters all of the different regions we've created and see how it's got a name so if I just want to render just chapter 2 I'll select that from the region matrix and now it says render one file instead of render three so if I click render one file I click it it renders that one file and we'll show that in Finder. And we can see that it created that one file. Now, the reason I, I, I wanted to show that to you, because now if we drag that file into Reaper again, you remember we had it include the regions and the markers. Well, look what happens. It puts markers or it puts designators within that WAV file 
that this was a region called chapter two, and there is a point here that we need to listen to that says check pronunciation. So if we're sending that off to a client or we're sending that off to an engineer, they can now see those files and actually see the notes directly in it. And they know they need to come to that point down and broke his crown and they need to listen to that section so that they can help us with that pronunciation. That is incredibly, incredibly helpful. When I was working on uh, this, this audiobook, I went back and forth with a client several times because there were a lot of names that I didn't have any idea how to pronounce. So I'd be able to render just that section, just that chapter with points in there that say, could you help me with the pronunciation of these names to make sure that I had them correct? So that's just incredibly helpful. Now, here's the last thing that I'll show you. When you're in the render menu, once you've got it rendering the way you like it, and you render for these clients over and over again, you may want to turn these into presets because this rendering, especially with the regions and the markers, it can really help you with your rendering. So I ha I've published books now both with uh, this Brilliance Audio Company and I've published books with ACX. And so I've got different presets that I use. So if I needed to turn this project around, let's say I had it rendering first for brilliance audio and i got there by clicking the presets and i told it to memorize these settings as a preset for brilliance audio i can say i want to render that in my brilliance audio chapter format and it automatically puts that there for us and then we click render and it will render the whole book but let's say i wanted to turn around and in i was supposed to render this for acx if i click the presets all settings. Now with the ACX preset, it will instead do an MP3. It will create the chapters and the regions and it will have the naming convention that ACX wants. So the, that region uh, rendering, using those regions, I can very quickly re-render my entire project. I don't have to go chapter by chapter trying to normalize and trying to get everything. I can have Reaper take care of all of that work for me. So really, I can concentrate on my performance and not on the technology. I hope this helps. If you have any questions about how it works or if I've skipped anything, just hit me up in the comments and I'll let you know uh, if I can help you. So good luck. Get in your booth and render something amazing. Have a great day. All right, so you know how this works, right? So it's the end of the video, and we've got a little screen here with two other videos that I think might be helpful for you. They might have some good information, especially if you want to become a voiceover artist. Lots of tips and tricks in here, so go ahead and click one of those videos. But before you go, if you would, just click on that subscribe button for me, would you? I'd really appreciate it. Did you click it? Oh, I hope you did. Well, anyway, we'll see you at the next video, and I look forward to bringing more to you. Thanks.